This is an introduction to the use of OpenEHG as part of the Tanzania BID initiative. The Better Immunization Data Initiative, or BID initiative, is founded on the premise that better data helps people make better decisions that lead to better health delivery and eventually better health outcomes. It aims to improve the way that immunization data is collected, analyzed, and most importantly used in various countries across Sub-Saharan Africa. While that is a great goal, it is far from enough. What is really needed is better overall data. We need to find ways to connect the immunization data, the service delivery, and the broader health data. We don't want to create an immunization data silo. The OpenHE infrastructure will help us to ensure that this is not siloed data. It will help other systems and programs to connect and share relevant data to provide the most and best possible care in the most cost-effective way. By funding the initial OpenHIE installation in Tanzania and using it for immunization data and service delivery data, we will create a vehicle for connectivity previously not available to other programs. Immunization services are delivered in almost all health facilities in the country, so we'll have a very wide coverage that should be significantly less effort for others to connect to. The appropriate normalization of the data will help in reporting and in future plans. As part of the Tanzania bid uh, system, we have three main components. We have our uh, HMIS, Health Management Information System, that's being played by DHIS2. This collects the data uh, about immunizations, the vaccines given on a routine monthly basis. We have GIIS, which is our immunization system. This is the system that records the immunization events. It's what is going to be used in the health clinics by the nurses as they administer uh, the vaccines. We have the ELMIS system, which has logistics and stocks information uh, related to the cold chain and for the uh, immunizations. All of these systems share data, and part of the the problem and that we're trying to solve with the with this implementation is how do we effectively exchange data between these systems, so that we can pull the uh, immunization data on a monthly basis and put it into the HMIS, so we can cross-reference the stock system, the ELMIS, um, against the GIIS. Uh, in addition, we have a facility registry, which uh, the has a list of all the health facilities that provide service delivery data. This health facility should be cross-referenced both with the HMIS and the GIIS to ensure accurate reporting. The tool that we're going to use is uh, OpenHIE. This will be our, our big black box, which I'll explain a little bit what the pieces are of the black box uh, in a minute. That's going to help all the data flow freely between the systems in a harmonized way. First, a bit about what OpenHIE is. It's a community of communities. There is a community for each one of the software components that are part of our health information exchange. This includes our facility registry, uh, a health worker registry, a client registry, um, and some various other components that we'll see in a briefly. Uh, what we having the community of communities ensures that these various communities can come together for a common goal, which is true interoperability of systems and the meaningful exchange of data. The OpenHIE is largely makes use of freely available standards that are coming from IHE, Integrating the Health Enterprise, which is a standards development organization that is free um, for anybody to participate and contribute to and, uh, and also very responsive to the needs that we are seeing in low and middle um, income countries. One of the advantages of using uh, standards uh, is that we avoid the pitfalls of vendor or, or software lock-in um, by having systems and um, software solutions that adhere to standards, these software solutions become independently swappable. Therefore, if the Ministry of Health or other stakeholder decides that a particular software component is no longer meeting their needs, they'll more they can freely swap out to a, use a different system. Um, in addition, it reduces the barriers to participate. Having uh, available documentation freely downloadable allows not just a, a developers, software developers to participate, but as well as the maintenance of the system becomes more transparent. So why OpenHIE? Um, put quite simply, we it is the means that we're going to achieve no more siloed systems. So what is OpenHIE? Let's unpack this a little bit. 
um, first of all, the health management information system as well as the facility registry are components of the OpenHIE. Um, and so if we try to look at this black box of what OpenHIE is, um, first of all, we have the GIS system and the, the logistics systems that want to share data into the OpenHIE. We have the DHIS2 system that is receiving the, the routine reports. Uh, and we need a way for them to interface. The, the key piece of inter infrastructural piece that allows this interface is the interoperability layer. The interoperability layer is going to receive all incoming uh, transactions from uh, outside the HIE and make sure that they are uh, routed accordingly. In addition to the interoperability layer in the HMIS, we have our client registry. This is a master index of all subjects of care that will be um, treated in Tanzania. We have a shared health record. This is where all of the um, protected health information, the personal clinical information about a individual subject of care is recorded. So for example, if we have a vaccine uh, an event recorded by GIIS, this is sent up into the interoperability layer into to the shared health record. And we'll see some details of exactly how that happens in, in a few minutes. We have an interlinked registry of health services. This has information about uh, health workers and health facilities and we'll see the role of the facility registry with interlinked registry in just a moment. And we have a terminology service. This has uh, the set of terminologies that are for clinical purposes um, such as SNOMED or ICD-10 that might be used within a country as well as terminologies used uh, uh, in non-clinical settings such as the, the more of the public health health systems management which would include the type of the facility, the type of the health worker. Um, all of these could be managed in a, a terminology service. At the moment we are not going to be employing a, a full terminology service, only the one that's um, tied in with the interlinked registry. Uh, it is in our future plans to have a, a more um, capable terminology service deployed. So I would like to dig in a little bit on the interoperability layer. It is the key piece that provides the governance, security, and harmonization um, of our system. So you might imagine that we, as we add in new systems that, uh, that for example, an EMR system, that they want to communicate within the HIE. They have data about a subject of care that they would like to record into the shared health record. So we want to make sure that this data that the EMR is providing um, is uh, valid data uh, and that they're authorized to do that. We might have a mobile application that which is to query for information about a health facility or a health worker, find when uh, uh, um, services are be being offered for immunization events. Um, we can, as there is publicly shareable information, from the the health worker registry or the or a facility registry, th this would uh, provide a way to the mobile applications would provide an easy interface for that. But again, we want to make sure that everyone is um, authorized to do so. So this authorization happens at the interoperability layer. You want to think of this as being the lock for the health information exchange. So the the interoperability layer is going to make sure that the mobile apps, the EMR, the various other systems that might want to interact have the, the authority to do so. And the design of this lock is informed by the policy, e-health framework, regulation, and legislation that uh, is being actively defined in Tanzania now. So as these policies get developed, the interoperability layer will be the place that holds that uh, and enforces those policies. So let's look at a specific um, immunization event. So we start off with the uh, a nurse in a clinic providing a vaccine um, to a, a child. And so at that point in the GIIS system, we generate an immunization message. The GIS system was then going to send that message up into the interoperability layer where uh, validation of that message and orchestration of that message can occur. 
the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to check that I'm sorry so the the message that is getting sent in the xds.b format it is a standard from IHE the next question we want to, to validate is who received that vaccine for that we go to the client registry um, we look at the subject of care referenced in that message and ensure that it is a valid subject of care and for this we're using the PDQ or PDQM um, uh, profile from IHE. Next we want to determine where the vaccine was given and who gave it. For that we go into our interlinked registry. Um, the interlinked registry is based on the CSD standard from IHE and it's actually composed of several data sources um, or, or will be composed of se several data sources. We have the Health Facility Registry. Um, the Ministry of Health may, would also have an HR system uh, which would have its health workers. And in Tanzania, the CSSC is the Umbrella FBO organization uh, and they also have a large number of health workers. So all of these federated s sources of data are linked together into one common interlinked registry um, which is the uh, defined by the CSD standard. Um, these are also reporting data in the CSD standard as well. Once we've passed all the validations we can add our uh, immunization event to the shared health record. Here we have a, a database essentially of for each subject of care, we have all the, the various clinical events that uh, occur around that subject of care. For the Tanzania BID project, we're only going to be producing uh, immunization events or an immunization content. As with this infrastructure, if there are other programs that wish to participate for other um, care requirements, care delivery requirements, they can use the same infrastructure to add different content. Again, um, the standard here for, for the exchange of the clinical information is xds.b. Once we have the data in the shared health record, we can expose that data to other systems. Um, for example, uh, uh, an e a medical record system, if it would like to check to see if the person has had their immunizations, um, a symptomatic child, for example, they can go into the shared health record or the EMR can go into the shared health record and query to see what the immunization history of that child is. Um, of course, we want to make sure that our, our lock is in place and that only the uh, authorized EMR systems are allowed to access that data. Now, as we go through a, a period of time, for example a month, we'll be collecting multiple messages from GIS into the shared health record. Once we have that, we can start doing aggregate data collection from the shared health record and then report that into the DHIS2 system. So we might be looking at the, the number of, of vaccine counts for the various uh, vaccines administered at a facility over a month period. Um, as we want to report this to the, the HMIS DHIS2 in this case and we'll be using a, um, a profile from IHE called ADX. At this point ADX is in development by members of the OpenHI community and we'll be pre-adopting this for the purposes of uh, the Tanzania BID project. So just speak a little bit about CSD in the Federation of uh, the Interlinked Registry. So CSD is answering a few questions. Who are your health workers? Where do they work at what health facilities? For whom are they working? What is the organization that they are working for? Um, and what services do they provide? And once we put this together, we have our interlinked health worker registry. Uh, here we have um, several potential sources of data. We might have an HR management system that you would see, for example, at the Ministry of Health or the CSSC. Uh, we have professional um, license and registration systems that would have the credentials for health workers. Um, so they would be contributing to, the, to knowing whether the, the health worker is licensed and to perform the health services that they're providing. We might also have pre-service and in-service training information systems that um, 
that also describe the competencies that a health worker has obtained um, throughout their career. Uh, we would also have potential sources of community health workers, um, people that are not um, necessarily paid public sector health workers, but um, are providing various health services. Um, and there might be several, many databases um, that of these community health workers, but we do want, we would want them in to have it, have them in a national health worker registry. Um, just to look a little bit of how this actually operationalizes, we have um, on the right hand side you see we have a facility registry, FR, and a health worker registry, the HWR, and the facility registry is the master list of the, the facility information. The health worker registry has the, the various pieces of health worker information according to the WHO minimum data set, and it cross-references the facilities, uh, the facility registry. The interlinked registry um, will collect the data from these two systems and merge them together. Um, in the case where we have multiple systems reporting health worker data, um, that merge policy becomes um, something a little bit different. We would say from an HR system, we might have health worker deployment data. From a license and credential system, we would have the, the credentialing information. So whatever the, the, the sources of the data and the, 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 the authorities of the data will, uh, are respective, and in arrow 5, where that's merged together, um, we can produce a, the interlinked registry that is a, the master reference for the health services being provided by the IHE, or the HIE.